contra o outro. developing a project called Say Something, which started about two and a half years ago uh, on working with amateur choirs on themes around groups and group dynamics, group behavior and freedom of expressions within groups. And we researched with several choirs, choirs and theater groups around Europe, primarily Norway, Sweden, Portugal, um, Iceland, etc. And now we uh, premiered the work in February last year at the Place Theatre in London with a, a, a London-based choir. And uh, we're currently associate artists at Dance Digital and we are developing the work with animation artist Rachel Davis mm -hmm. for um, performances along the Lee River for Leap Festival in the summer as part of the Cultural Olympiad Big Dance uh, Commission. Wow. So that means that you are doing this uh, kind of evolution of the work in, uh, you know, this three years in a way yeah. that goes from kind of creating this system, a participatory yeah. system in yeah. a way, and then uh, the development, you are adding uh, more multimedia? Yes, exactly. So the, the base of the work has been around voice work and movement and the, the fact that it's a participatory project. So the audience is right, really in the midst of the performance uh, mm -hmm. on stage working their way, milling around the performers uh, and being sort of gently interacted with and constantly asked for feedback how they're experiencing the show, which is part of this mm. idea of opening up regarding you know, freedom of expression and sharing of ideas. So it's been a quite... Quite, a quite relevant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's been a kind of almost uh, verging on a social experiment um, that each show has had a different outcome and each show has had different participa participation with an audience. Uh, and now we're working with a filmmaker and animator, Rachel Davis, on the kind of how to incorporate the digital aspect of the work and uh, a visual, more visual aspect to the work. Because it was very basic initially with the of space and performers and sort of quite pedestrian. Yeah. It may, change, it may change the format in a certain way. It, it certainly will change the format as a site-specific work, because now we're also uh, developing it for outdoors, which is mm -hmm. new. So it will be uh, in a kind of a nature, mm -hmm. most probably environment along a river. So partly the voice work will, will shift and the way the kind of grouping and choreography works, and then how to then light the show with the animation. Mm -hmm and thematically heighten it with, with the help of animation as well. So it's sort of some sections become clearer and we'll use it to sort of subliminally divide or sort of cohort the audience into different groups and, and, and kind of being prompted to move to certain spaces yeah. and being prompted to speak up in the microphones. Yeah. Kind of like using participatory scores or yeah, because yes. I saw some of the videos and they kind of like to do the formations and there is this constant uh, kind of deconstructing the format. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes, I think that's exactly that. That's right. And I think it's quite a dense show already with a lot of information. And I think it, it can really be clarified to an audience or more kind of clearer with, with another visual aspect, I think. And I think we're working with Rachel now just in early, early days yet but talking about these ideas of signs and how we have lots of sort of signs sig signifying, you know, how to move and the kind of health and safety aspects of things, you know, you're forbidden to do this, or mm. this is the exit signs, is it really? <laughs> so sort of these things um, being part and lifting mm. the message a bit, and uh, as well as, you know, like Dogville, the film a lot from Three Year, where they sort of, lined out you know very simply spaces for yeah, pathways exactly yeah. and so trying to use it as a, a movement um initiating movement for the audience and the group 
and also kind of light, really lighting the show, especially outdoors now, seeing how how that's possible. I mean, it'll be a challenge in, in July because it'll be quite bright. <laughs> yes. And uh, how do you connect this work or relate it in the context of your own work, the rest of your work? That I know that you have done things that you kind of have, have the cabaret format and with the guests. And, yeah. Uh, you also have done a lot of uh, some films. Yeah. So I, I think it's a sort of, we did more filmic work sort of six, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. It was myself and Heidi performing in kind of a small entity and mm. used kind of more visual aspects, used camera on stage as live mm. projection, used animation as backdrop, made a couple of film works. And I think in sort of in discussion with Tamara at Dance Digital, just she was really keen on the work when we performed mm. it at the place and just how, how things could be developed. And we both, both me and Heidi wanted to do sort of keep developing it and make it more more visual really mm -hmm. and um, I think it's a work that will keep developing mm -hmm. th throughout many many years it's super <laughs> mobile and it's yeah. very kind of flexible which yeah. makes it exciting but yeah, yeah and and needs a long 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 process to yeah. sort of I don't think it will ever finish yeah so the in the context of you know the history of, of let's say, participation and participatory performance yeah. and happenings. Yeah. And, you know, there is practically a 50-year tradition in, in our side of the world. Yeah. So uh, how would you place your, your work? Uh, why now? Yeah, et cetera. yeah. Uh, I think for us it's been quite a, a kind of organic process from being very interested in the audience, always having a mm -hmm. kind of interaction yeah. while performing. Um, and then the kind of breaking down the fourth wall, the, the kind of what, what does the audience mean to a work and can they have, can they decide and can they direct the work? Because you know, they're obviously sitting there judging what they're seeing yeah. and wanting things to happen or not. So how, how is that play yeah. and what is the power and uh, who's got the power? <laughs> and also a little bit, you know, talking about everyday influences, how we go through, you know, our daily life pretty much on kind of auto, you know, we, yeah. we don't question much and there's the whole kind of idea of group and conformism, which I think mm. us both being Scandinavian is quite strong in Scandinavia mm. because it's this sort of jante law where you don't stick out, you just mm -hmm. try and, you know, fit in fit to in. the norms and to the whatever, you don't question much. Which I, and now I guess it's just blooming out. It's, yeah. it's so relevant all over, yeah. you know, with the uprisings and everything. It's kind of so I think for us it's been a, an organic process, and then um, it just happened to happen now, and, and this whole yeah. political <laughs> yeah. mess yeah. and upheaval is yeah. just happening. So. It's necessary. Yeah. And uh, how do you? Uh, put this work out there with uh, your performers, you know, like uh, you, you really, I think that have to have certain kind of special performers that want to deal with this kind of interactions, with yeah. the unexpected, with some kind of bottom up yeah. uh, emergence of the performance. I think we were uh, initially, I mean, we're still very interested in doing this with loads of different groups, loads of yeah. different choirs and mm -hmm. sort of social context. The refugee choir, gay and lesbian choir, children's yeah. choir. So the choir is the one that is your cast? The choir is our cast. Oh, that's great. And then we have four <laughs> professional performers okay. that are the same each show. Ah, okay. So that keeps they certain sort of have the a scaffolding. Yes, a sort okay. of some kind of support and leadership. And they're a particular group within the group. And mm -hmm. then there's the audience group. So there's sort of three mm -hmm. groups as well as a musician and a sound technician on stage. So they all have sort of different yeah. powers to change the show, yeah. really. Because now you were doing this kind of real-time sampling of uh, yeah. or using sound. that yeah. sound. Yeah. That's how the, the show is still. Is yeah, it's, it's a cappella voices to uh -huh. start with. And then Sylvia, the composer, Sylvia Hallett, is yeah. kind of manipulating the voices and making an underscore to, to support that. So the show was very much built on, on the sound and on the kind of choral score initially, 
we try to build it up side by side, but sort of all new new areas for both us and Celia. So it was, that's why the research was so long. But I think that's exciting that we're kind of constantly learning and constantly <laughs> evolving in this in this beast. You know, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> the beast of participation yeah, in a yeah, way exactly. and, and reconceiving how to create architecture for it. Yes. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, I think the choirs that have been sort of the most successful as such has been where there's been a real interest in the choir in this sort of, mm -hmm. of, of work, of scenic work. In, in Sweden they have sort of stage choirs where yeah. do a lot of movement and a lot of stuff around group and performing. Yeah. And then the, there's been a sort of openness to explore it. Whereas maybe if you're used to standing frontally yeah. and singing to an audience, it's yeah. more difficult yeah. and more difficult to, because you are in really close proximity yeah. to the audience. It's almost like participatory opera, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> in a way, exactly. with, uh, with uh, technology. And yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we're kind of interested in quite a, a sort of, uh, not a theatrical expression as such, but you are very much yourself. And, and, exactly. and whatever that means, and it's sometimes difficult to achieve that with an mm -hmm. amateur choir. I think you are. I think with singing as well, there is this sort of forced yeah. performatory drama that kind of <laughs> comes in, which maybe is just also part of what singing, you know, a high note requires. Mm -hmm. oh. A certain kind of uh, yeah. posture yes. and alignment. And and face, <laughs> it's sort of facial expression. So it's trying to. Yeah. And not go to that place and, and move through simple oh. movements. It's quite tricky. Yeah, well, that's good. And then, could you tell us again when is the next uh, iteration of, of this, of the show? Next uh, presentation. Presentations and the next uh, kind of stages with stages the Stages of development. Yeah. Um, so now we're basically deciding the site for the mm -hmm. show. So we have three different possibilities along the Lee River Valley, that mm -hmm. part of, of Hertfordshire. We'll, this is all going to happen in March. We need to employ a production mm -hmm. manager and keep developing the animation with Rachel. And then we're working with two student groups, one at Bedford University, one at Roehampton University, mm -hmm. which will kind of form part of the choir or be part mm -hmm. of the choir. So hopefully we'll get a locally based choir and these two student groups to perform in SIF dance, which is in Bedford University, 21st of June. Mm -hmm as part of their festival and then we'll move on to the Lee Valley uh, Leak Festival in July 13, 14, 12, 13, 14, 15 July and then the work is taken to Edinburgh Fringe Festival in August oh, nice. for three weeks with the Edinburgh Best Choir. Right. So these are the kind of blocks for now. <laughs> and well, Norway, yes uh -huh. we're going to Norway in May, that's right, Oslo and Trondheim. Yeah, like in, in May. Way. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate and uh, can you tell your URL <laughs> of the website, of your website? Uh, the website is www.h2dance.com. Okay. Well, thank you very much again.